I want to start off by saying, call Halal Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, and it's all praises to the Heavenly Father, in the name of who the world is in the cause, Jesus Christ. Real name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. I'm Azmawa from the Dallas camp. Not go on. Uh, come on. So, uh, say what? No, I was just asking if you had um heard me. Oh, okay, God, yeah, I heard you. Yeah, so brother, he man, he brought out a beautiful precept. You know what I'm saying? That uh, while we was talking, and uh, shit, yeah, I'll read it real quick, man. This is Iraq 25 and verse 7. He say, There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter it with my tongue. Meaning, he's going to profess this thing with his tongue, man. He's not going to hold back, he's not going to keep silence, right? And a, a man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Right? As me and the brother Nakawa was discussing before we got on this, uh, before we got on this chat, man, we're in those times, man. We're in the times that, in the and basically one of the most, um, one of the most climatic scenes that's portrayed right here in the Bible. We get to see the rise of Israel, and we get to see the fall of our enemies. Right, which is these heathen nations, but in particular, uh, our main foe from the very get go was Esau, man. He's our main foe. Now we get to we we get to live once again because hey, we just regenerated spirits, right? But now the the Most High has regenerated us right here in the flesh in these final days to see the fall of our enemy, the same man that raped, robbed, and murdered our ancestors, which was us. So this same man, right, that raped, robbed, and murdered us back then, now we get to see him, man. We get to see the reward of the wicked. Let me get that real quick. This is Psalms uh, 91. <clears throat> this is Psalms 91. I'm going to start at verse um, 8. He says, only, I'm going to start at verse 7. He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side. And we're, we're living on those times where that's happening and that's about to really happen uh, in, in, a, um, in, a, in a very uh, micro uh, or macrocosmic scene, right? We're going to see millions upon millions, bodies stacked upon bodies right out here in these streets, man. Blood flowing in the drains, you know? It's going to be massive bloodshed, right? A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right side, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And who's his wicked? Esau. We're, like Sirach was saying, and uh, Sirach 25 and verse 7, he says, this is something that makes him happy. He gets to live to see the fall of his enemy. And Psalms is right here saying, only with thy eye you're going to behold and see the reward of the wicked. So tonight, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahshah, we're going to go into this wicked one, man. The, the, the man of sin, right? And how he works the mystery of sin all through the ages, man. Starting with him being uh, Cain, right? In his, in his uh, previous life, man. All right? Because Esau is nothing but a reincarnated um, uh, uh, man of Esau. I mean, of uh, uh, Salak, uh, of Cain. Right, so there, there's plenty of uh, parallels we could go through the Bible between the two, you know, um, you know. So tonight we're gonna focus on on this prophecy real quick, right here in Jeremiah 49, and verse 10. He says, "But I have made Esau bear, and how is he making Esau bear right now? By the mouth of his prophets, uncovering his secret parts." unveiling the, the the lies that he has perpetuated to keep uh, our people and even his people in a state of obliviousness and darkness because this is a land of darkness, All right? And he says, and I have uncovered his secret places. Esau deals in, he, he deals in secret places. Where's his secret places in these, in these, uh, in these councils that they hold, right? That the, that the general public, I can't see. These, these group of elite, Say what up? He said, bro. Con, you can bring it up. Con, because cause you said, because you said that um 
the most high is using who? His men. So this is Hosea 12 and 10. I have also spoken by the prophets. So you see that? The most high, he's speaking wow. through the prophets, right? The men, the men, the men of the Lord. Wow. That's how Esau is made bare, because the most high provides us with the information. Then we go out there and we profess it, or we do it on the internet wow. and profess it. Right? So it says, I have made Esau bear. No slog it. Huh. I have also spoken about the prophets. Mm -hmm. and I have also, huh? No, I was laughing. You said you made yourself good. <laughs> <laughs> and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So you have a wow. ministry of prophethood. So the most sought uses his prophets to do what? Like what Jeremiah 28 and 8 says. It says the prophets that was there before me and the prophets that are older, I prophesied both against many uh, great uh, countries, right, of war, pestilence, and evils. Ah, ah. And that's, all, and that's all what comes with it. Ah. And um, and, and land backing off that brother, you know what I'm saying, how, how the Most High uses the mouth of his prophets to, to uncover the secret places and to shed light on this dark man, right, and this dark man, this man of sin is Esau, Hosea 6 and 5. Therefore have I hewn them down by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth. This is how he does it, man. He slays Esau. And this is why you see, hey, and this is, uh, hey, bro, you see it on cameras, man. If, if y'all watch, if y'all watch these camps, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? You you see Esau getting slayed, bro, literally by the words of the, uh, of the mouth of his prophets. They are cut to the heart. Why? Because Hebrews 4 and 12 says that his word is as a double-edged sword, piercing and dividing even to the asunder of soul. And you literally see Esau bleed out spiritually, man, in the streets by the mouth of these prophets as the Most High God is already ordained. Right? He says, and thy judgments are as the light, check this out, as a light that goeth forth. As a light that goeth forth. Right? Why is the judgment as a light that goeth forth? What does the light do? It sheds light in dark areas to show what's in the dark. Right? Let's go to Luke 12 real quick. I got something too. Come on, come on. It's Luke 12, verse 2. He says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. So when Esau and his elite men and women, you know, get in these secret councils together, you know, go to the damn bohemian groves or whatnot. Hey, whatever is being spoken in the darkness, the most high God, he's revealed it to his prophets. And we filter everything out through this, through this, through the Holy Scripture and, and through these prophecies. And we're going to shed light on that thing. This is how, this is how uh, Esau is being made bare. Right? He says, and that which you have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. All right. What's your precept up? Kind. First Corinthians 4 <clears throat> and 5. Uh, that's it. It says, therefore judge nothing. It says, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden thing of darkness. And will make manifest, which the word manifest means reveal, will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, right? Ooh. right? Which the counsels of the hearts is then with what? The, the plots, yeah. right? The plots that people think in their mind, right? It says, and then shall every man have praise of the most high, right? We're going to praise the most high over this because uh. he has, because he has revealed, revealed these things unto us so that we can expose expose this guy which you know that's the uh, premise of the video and you know it's so crazy the sit down we did on uh, which that's coming soon the sit down we did on um uh, what was that day friday yeah mm. uh philly the sit down that we did is is, is entitled the beast that's going into captivity mm. and the beast and the beast i was talking about is, is nato man uh. because and then we was going in depth the origins of NATO, right? Because all because because all the European countries that we see over there in Europe, they all go back to the uh, ancient Roman Empire, all right? Spain, Portugal, Great Britain, France, all of them. Okay, which 
you know, you know, they're hiding under under these names, some of them, right? Because France, uh, France, um, Luxembourg, and all of them, they was the Gauls, right? And so on and so forth. And the same precepts we was bringing out, Jeremiah 49 and 10, we have made Esau bear, we was literally, we was literally stripping Esau, man, right? And that's the time that we're in. We're, we're, you know, we're really in a time of prophesying against Esau, man, Mount Sir. For real, bro. That's how you notice the end. Because what other time period in history has this ever happened, man? Right. I mean, never. The Christian church ain't done it. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we didn't do it before then because we was in captivity, right? So, and, and the priest that we're going to pull in 2 Thessalonians, man, goes to show you that this is a time period where all this is happening, which should let you know, we should put your mind in the gear and let you know, listen, man, redemption is not, right? Let me pull this real quick. This is Psalms 2. I'm going to start at verse 1. He says, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Where do imaginations come from? From your mind, right? So you're scheming, you're plotting a vain thing. He says, the kings of the earth and who's the king of the earth right now? Esau, his counterparts, says, set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. You see, man, this is something that's that's always been going on. This ain't nothing new to where the elites like the Rothschilds, the Illuminati and, you know, and all these other people, the, the um, uh, you know, any other elite name that you uh, that you can name. man. This ain't nothing new. They've been doing this. They've been doing this. And this is actually. This is actually a prophecy that David is given, right? Something that happened even in his time period and something that um, that he was prophesying that was also going to happen even right down here till today in 2020. He says, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh. So when they do these things, they're doing it against the most high. Remember that word. This is a key word, against. What's another word for against? Opposition or oppose, right? He says, against Yahweh and against his anointed. Who's his anointed? Who's the ones that the Most High set aside or made holy? Yashirala, right? He says, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us, right? He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh and the Lord shall have them in derision. And, uh -huh. and you see, this is exactly what's going on today, right? Man, these heathens, let me get that real quick. These heathens particularly Esau, man, they are had in derision right now. The Egyptians are set against the Egyptians, right? <laughs> you got the damn elections going on. You got Democrats on one hand, you got Republicans on the other, you know? You got racial tensions that, that's rising up. You got the left on one side, the right on, uh, on the other side, man. These people are, they're had in derision. They're confounded. They confounded themselves, basically, but it was all thrust uh, and, and, and vibrations came out because of the mouth of the prophets and so all these things uh, all, all praise bro i may not i may not go to sleep tonight man <laughs> god god yep let's see this is um <clears throat> let me get this in psalms 33 let's see it's somewhere down here psalms 33 Yeah, here you go. Psalms 33 and 10 says, Yahweh bringeth the counsel, right? Where do counsels come from? From your mind. And they conjure it up together with themselves. It says, Yahweh bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught, right? Meaning to nothing. He says, he maketh the devices of the people of none effect. So yeah, Esau can be plotting all day long, but it's under the bounds and it's restricted by what the Most High has already foretold that was going to happen. He, Esau can't go beyond, man. And he also can't do less than what was prophesied for him to do. Facts. Yeah, that's Job. Um, that's Job 14 and 5. I get that. Job 14 and 5. He says, See, man, see, man this, see this is what the Bible means where it says, uh, um, um, a belly's flowing with living waters, man. Uh, uh. And because anything we say, like you know, and, and we and we can't help it. <laughs> we can't help it because because we have we ha we do have a subject to go into, but it's like it's just a lot to say, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot to say. This is the time to talk, man. 
This is the time to talk. Yeah, for real, man. Yep. Yeah, bro. Yeah, this is Joe 14 and 5. He says, yeah, bro. his days are determined. Woo! Hey, what does that mean, determined, man? <laughs> Let's pull it up. He says, to be decisive. So, yeah, the Lord has already decided the amount of time that Esau is going to reign. He gives, right. when you read in Daniel 7, listen, he, he gives each kingdom a, an allotted amount of time. It's decided already, right? And once again, that king or that kingdom can't go past his time, right? And we are on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the edge of Esau's uh, rulership, man. So, Job 14 and 5, he says, seeing that his days are determined, the number of his months are with all the way down to the must, man. Hey, bro, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful preset. He said, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Yep. That goes, that goes exactly what you just said. He can't do anything more. He can't do anything less. Dang. The most side, the most side, the most side appointed, appointed his rulership. When his rulership was going to start. When his rulership is going to end, it is going to end on the dot. Wow. The Lord says, man, "Ain't no." If, if the Lord wants Esau's rulership to be done January first, two thousand twenty-one, at 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 one o'clock p.m., it ain't going to go to no one o'clock point one. No, it's going to end at one o'clock on the dot. Yep. Yep. Period. It's his world, man. It's his. That's right. Everything orchestrated by. His plans, man, whether you like it or not. This is Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. He says, to everything, there's a season. There's a season. You look at that word season. Boom. A set time. <laughs> Appointed time. You see that out? Con, see that? <laughs> to everything, there's a season. Time. Time. So this is Esau's season. This is his appointed time. And a right. time to every purpose under the heaven. And what's, right. the, what's the purpose of Esau even ruling? What's his purpose? To, to be the rod of our chastisement from the most high. To purge the sons of Jacob. Because we sinned against our maker. Right? So this was Esau's time. This was his appointed time and a lot of the amount of time just to whoop the shit out of us, man. And the most high set him up in, in this stead. Right? But he's about to come down. Let me go. Uh, let me go down here to verse uh, verse seven. It says a time to rend. Uh huh. See, this is the time of Esau's kingdom to be rent apart. Because at first there's a time for it to be. Uh, there's a time for it to uh, to build. The Most High God allowed Esau to rape, rob, and murder us to build up his immaculate empire, right? But now it's the time to rend. What did he tell you in Malachi chapter one? Right? He says for Esau says that uh, he will build, but I will tear down. When your house shot comes back, that's that time to rent Esau's kingdom, right? He says, and a time to sow, right? So what's the time of sowing right now? Sowing the seeds of this word into the, uh, into the elect's minds so we can grow up fruitful trees and producing good fruit to your house and your house shot, man. He says, and a time to keep silence and a time to keep silence and a time to speak. And what is, and this is definitely the time to speak right now. This is the time. Let me get that in Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, verse 1. He says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So, this is definitely the time to be speaking right now. We've been quiet for too long. So, we are in the season of speaking, the season of prophesying, the season of rending apart Esau's kingdom with the words of this Bible as well as building up the house of uh, David, of soul. That's right. That's right. That is damn right. All right. So, so, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. I <clears throat> yeah, man, that was, a, that was like a 30, long 30-minute 30 intro. <laughs> hey, hey, man, it's the spirit, bro. Because our people, our people, man, we, 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 because there's a, there's a few Israelite groups out there, man, you know what I'm saying, that they don't understand the importance and the magnitude of exposing this dude and we didn't even finish that preset let me go back to jeremiah 49 they don't even understand the importance of exposing esau man 
They just feel like it's good enough just for you to know that you're Israelite. Don't worry about who these other nations are. Just focus on you, right? But that's not the case because there's prophecies in here concerning about this man has to be hewn down. This man has to be exposed, right? Because Esau's on trial right now. What do you think Judgment Day is about? What do you think that, that word uh, plea or uh, uh, goes into? It's shapat, it's judgment, right? So if you, before you judge anybody, what is it? That's a trial period. Who's he judging? These, these heathen nations that's done his people wrong. So in order for there to be a, a just judgment, a, a accusation has to be made. And who's the accuser? Who's accusing Esau right now? The prophets. <laughs> the prophets, ultimately the most high, right? But now the elect and, and the people that, that he is called by his spirit, that we've gotten a hold to these words in this book. And now we are making accusations against them. All right, let me finish that in Jeremiah 49. He says, but I have made Esau bear and I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide. He shall not be able to hide himself. He should not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled. Ooh, and we're going to get that too. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors. And he is not. And he is not. Man. Right. Right. I just want to say some light on when it said, um, and, and he should not be able to hide himself because what this, because, because what this, uh, man Esau, the red Hebrew Edomite, <laughs> what, what he's been doing was trying to run, run from the fact that he's an Edomite. Wow. That's why he that's why he goes and conquer these different nations and 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 tack on their names, man. Mm. Okay? Like number 1, everybody think the white man is damn Japhet. No, the white man, the so-called white man is not Japhet. Okay? He stole he stole the Japhet's identity as the Greeks and the Romans, man. Okay? And then he ran on start calling himself the Khazarian Empire, right? Start calling himself Israelites. He portrayed himself to be the Egyptian. The so-called white man is just every damn thing. Yeah. He everything but an Edomite. <laughs> and then had people thinking that the Edomites are really black. Damn. Like, bro, he even he he's even trying to hide himself amongst Ishmael. Like it's just it's just so crazy, bro. He even tried to hide himself amongst Ishmael. Hmm. This he guy trying to hide himself, bro. Oh. But you're not. But but hey, man, you you're not you're not hiding yourself anymore. The most I got you exposed via the internet. Matter of fact, I forgot which one it was. I believe it was David Rockefeller. He hmm. said that the internet should have never been invented. Dang. That that was a quote. That was a quote by. By, by by the Rockefeller, he said the internet should have not been invented. Oh well, the most I put the spirit on you to invent it. So you know, hey, what virtue that he says thou condemnest thy own self? Because that's basically yeah, what Job, you did. <laughs> yeah, Job, yeah, Job, um, fifteen and six. Job fifteen six. He says, "Thy own mouth condemneth thee, and not I." Yay, thy own lips testify against against thee because yeah, because they got some of their own people telling them, yeah, yeah, no, nah, yeah, we are the Edomites, man. You know, so they hey bro, they shot themselves in the foot, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is all a part of how he sets the counsel of the heathen at not. Right. Hey man, that's cold. Yep. And he says, and his seed is spoiled. How's his seed spoiled? Job 27. He says. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors. <laughs> is Esau not a heritage? Does he not have a, a, a legacy of oppressive uh, of oppression? All right, which they shall receive of the Almighty if his children, which is his seed, right? This is how his seed is spoiled. If his cheat, if his children be multiplied, it is for the sword. Hey, Amen. Hey, the, let the multitudes die in vain, who were born in vain, 2nd Ezra 9 and 22. There's multitudes, and this is something that Christians just can't fathom. Why would God create uh, a, a lot of people in vain? In vain? You know, this is his world, man. Everybody, everybody plays their part, right? But after you get done playing your part, he's going to throw you away, man. 
right? All he really dealing with is his cluster of the great, his cluster of the vine, which is Israel, right? He says, if his children be multiplied, it is for the sword and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. This is how Esau, this is how um, in Jeremiah, or why in Jeremiah 49 to 10, he said that his seed is spoiled. So yeah, let me go to 2 Thessalonians real quick. Dang, man, I got another precept you on mine. All right. It says, <coughs> he says, uh, this is First Peter chapter 1 and 10. He says, let's see. He says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. All right. Because, you know, you had a lot of prophets. They were searching diligently, you know, of, of these prophecies that was, that, uh, that was being pinned down. It says, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, which is basically the going into the death, burial, and resurrection and the works of Yahweh Shah, right? He says, searching what or what manner of, the, of time the spirit of Hamashiach, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Hamashiach and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the thing. So a lot of these uh, prophecies, it wasn't even revealed to them, like, like Daniel, right? Um, when, uh, when Gabriel had gave him that, um, after, um, let's see, where was that? You know what I'm talking about? When uh, he basically said, shut up the book for this is, um, for then it's gonna be Daniel 12. Daniel 12. Daniel 12. Yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah, just land back and um, um, going back to verse 10, right? Which, you know, that grace that's, that, that was prophesied unto us was like bro said, death, burial, the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahweh Shai, and also the salvation of our people, okay? Right. And then 11, searching what or searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Hamashiach, which was in them, did. Signifies so that verse just said that the prophets had the spirit of Yahweh shy on them. You go, you, you go to you go to Revelation 19 11, it says, For the spirit of uh, yeah, 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 yep. Revelation 19 10, he says, yep. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah, worship God, for the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. These guys had a testimony of Yahweh Shah because them guys was in the spirit of prophecy, mm. which they're back on the scene today. Wow. Them guys had the spirit of Yahweh Shah already. Yahweh Shah was already supping with them already before he was revealed as Yahweh Shah, man. That's crazy. Dang. Hey, that's why the prophets that yo, that and that just yo, that yo, yo, that right there, that alone just goes so deep because that just lets you know that the prophets were already foreordained to follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth, referring back to wow. Revelation 14 chapter. Uh wow. dang. dang. So follow the lamb. All right. Oh, ooh, ooh. yeah. Let me get this real quick. This is Sirach 27. And now he says, the birds will resort unto their light. So will truth return unto them that practice in her. Hey, this and this going to, to basically regeneration too. The truth is going to return into you, right? Return into you, right? So like the brother was talking about how they had the spirit of Yahweh Shah on them back then, these same uh, uh, prophets that, that was back then of old, when they come back regenerated, boom, they're going to pick up where they left off, man. It says the spirit, the, the so will truth return unto them that practice in her. All right. And, uh, and that's how they were suffering with Yahweh Shah, man, through the prophecy, because Psalms 40 and 7 says, then said, I lo. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It is written of me, like the expression uh, someone may say, man, he's an open book. 
You know, that basically he's showing you about himself. That's what Yahweh Shah is doing in these pages of the of the Bible, man. He's an open book, right? But like the good, like the like the, the wise saying says, if you want to hide anything from a nigga, put in a book. <laughs> that's true, man. Because a lot of niggas just don't want to crack open this book. So that's why we don't know Yahweh Shah. That's why we don't suck with them, right? So yeah. But let's get to the lesson, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go on, get to the lesson. Yeah, Second Thessalonians. What's the timestamp on that? Oh, oh, oh. How, how much time do we? Let's see. I don't know how to check it. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know how to check it out. It won't say. Okay. Oh, uh, see this Second Thessalonians. I'm gonna start at verse two. I mean, uh, chapter. I can read. Go on, go on. Second Thessalonians two and two says that ye be not oh, soon. Huh? Little verse one. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now we beseech you. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our out of one Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, and by our our gathering together unto Him. By our and, gathering unto uh, together unto Him, right? And what was that in Genesis 49? Yep. Shiloh, right? Ah, it's the 49 people. and 10. It says, deception shall not depart from Judah, right? And what tribe does Jehovah shall come from? From Judah. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. All right? 2 Thessalonians 2 and 1 again. I'm going I'm to get this real quick in the NLT. All right? It says, now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, right? So Paul, obviously, right, was he had to clarify some things for the church of Thessalonica, right? Because there was obviously confusion concerning the, uh, concerning the second coming and, and the things preceding the second coming or so-called second coming or the redemption of the saints, basically, right? All right, so this epistle... He was basically clarifying um, some matters, going into things that, that has to happen before Yahweh comes back and we be gathered unto him. You go back to verse two up. Huh? All right. Says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Hamashiach is at hand. He said, nor by letter as from us, right? Because there are some people uh, back then that was posing letters in the stead of, of, of Paul or whatnot, right? Just basically to uh, to heap up teachers, I mean, to, to be teachers and heap up uh, followers unto themselves. Let's see, this is the NLT. It says, don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Oh, yeah, Con, yeah. Because you had some, 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 some people already saying that, man. And you still got people today saying, don't, <laughs> hey. So what? I said, I think those guys were named in Timothy, if I'm not, um, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, did they have a particular name? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, they did, but I don't uh, remember. Okay. Uh, uh, well, obviously, he's warning you about those sect of people. Hey, and don't uh, the Jehovah Witness believe uh, that he already came or something like that? Uh, I, I ain't sure. Okay. He says, and don't believe them. Even if they claim to have a spiritual vision, a revelation, or a letter supposedly from us. All right. Mm -hmm. So Paul was warning you about these false prophets, man, because uh, they were leading our people to stray and our people were, um, they were misinformed about the things that had to happen before uh, we get gathered unto uh, Yahweh Shah. So verse three. Verse three Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come. For that day? What's that day? Talking about the day of redemption. The day when your house shall comes back and commits judgment to this world. Go ahead. Except there come a falling, a, a falling away first. Except there come a falling away first. So this has to happen first, right? And when right. did this happen? When the Israelites lost their identity, right? When they were, uh, when they were just so uh, deeply enthralled um, in, in this basically uh this funnel of Helen uh, Hellenization right 
calling themselves Americans, you know what I'm saying? Calling themselves Greeks, Romans, and never coming into the knowledge that that was, that was actually Israelite. So that was them falling away from their heritage. Let me get that real quick in Psalms 83 real quick, All right? He says, this Psalms 83 and four, he says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Yeah, you go into that, that phrase, cut them off. That's basically uh, making them forget who they are. Make right. you cut some off. What is it going to do? It's going to fall away. It's going to fall off. He says that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Yeah, the other nation not going to remember us, right? And we're not going to remember ourselves as well either, right? So going back to Second Thessalonians two and three, we understand that this already happened, right? So there's one last thing that has to happen, and that is currently happen happening, which made us make this video to show you, hey man, we really here at the end of time. Go ahead. Al. Says, and that man of sin be revealed. And that man of sin, that man of sin, very particular. Of course, it's not, it's not talking about one man. It's talking about uh, 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 basically, well, uh, 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 a nation of people who derive from that man, that man Esau, that man of sin. Because Esau, what did he say in Malachi 1? Malachi 1. Malachi 1 and verse uh, 4. He says, Whereas, yeah, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says Yahweh host, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them, check this out, the border of wickedness. What is wickedness? It's sin. It's lawlessness, right? If you look at the NLT version in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, he says that man of lawlessness right and the border of wickedness what is it what is a border it's the end and the beginning of something so esau encompasses sin he encompasses wickedness right this is why down here in spiritual babylon right um or or mystery babylon is also known as the land of uh a spiritual sodom right because this is he's the one who perpetuates everything everything that's wicked and guess what he has the power to perpetuate righteousness if he wanted to but he doesn't because it's not in his spirit. So what does he push up on you? He pushes the LGBT community, right? He pushes uh, uh, bestiality, pedophilia. pedophilia, right? You name it, man, the list literally goes on. We don't have to go into this, this long, drawn out, uh, extensive background on this man. We should all know by now, right? So this man is the border of wickedness. He's the beginning and the end of it. We say y'all? He gets uh um Psalms 50 and verse um 16. I'll okay. read it. Yeah. All right, Psalms 50 and 16, because bro was talking about how how this guy just complete lawless, but then at the same time, got the got the nerve to try and hold on to our uh Bible, but they are completely lawless. The Psalms 50 and 16. It says. But unto the wicked, mm. the most I saith, what has thou to do to declare my statutes? Yeah, man, when you go up and when you go up in court, that the Bible, right? Which they tell you to swear on that Bible, because uh, allegedly this nation is built upon um, the scriptures, right? Allegedly, because really not. But even that in itself is off, because you're not you're not supposed to swear on God on the most high's words. Mm. And another thing, Ronald Ronald Reagan declared. 1980 the year of the bible but then again he turns around and put uh, uh drugs and guns in the so-called black neighborhoods wow so it says or that thou shouldest take my covenant in my mouth yeah and then go and then and then and going back to the 1948 ers right people should know what that is what happened in 1948 they professed to be believing in the torah but they didn't smoke cigarettes Right, they they do a, a they do circumcision by the mouth on on. You know what I'm saying like, what the hell? Fun of the slave or, trade. Yeah, ex fun of the slave trade. <laughs> right, and verse seventeen is the point. See, is thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee? Yeah. So this guy he hates instruction. He's completely lawless because instruction is going to what law? Tha, tha, wara in Hebrew. Tha, wara. 
which means uh which means instruction laws man this guy hates laws he's he's the border wickedness he's lawless mm. huh, huh. And, and who is this wicked right here and, and I, hey bro the psalms is very prophetic bro hey in verse 20 it says thou sittest and speakest against thy brother all right esau and jacob they're obviously brothers he he speaks against jacob and how does a nation speak through the through the laws and legislations right so how's he speak against Jacob, right? Now making uh, uh, making laws basically against us or contrary to us, right? This is why we fill up the uh, the, the prison systems, man. He says, "Thou slanderest thy own mother's son." Yeah, because we we both come from the same mother, man. All right. So yeah, I, yeah. Back to second. All right, back at it. Yeah. This is Second Thessalonians two. Oh, 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 read verse three again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the top, right. two ver verse three it says, "Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed." That man of sin be revealed. Right. Let's look at that word revealed. We're gonna we're gonna milk the hell out of these verses, bro, because there's so much in them, man. There's so much in him. He says, to uncover, lay open what has been veiled or covered up. Right? Mm -hmm. And what was that in, 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 uh, in Jeremiah 49 and 10? He says, but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places. Uh -huh. So going back to 2 Thessalonians, he says, uh, he, says for, um, he says, to uncover, to lay open what has been veiled or covered up. Well, who veiled or covered it up? He did. Like the brother said, he was taking on different identities, different uh, nas uh, uh, national names, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, bro, get Isaiah. Get Isaiah, I believe it's 25 or 7. Come. Come. Yeah, this is Isaiah 25 and 7. He says, and he will destroy in this mountain. The right and the mount and when you read in the Bible for mountains, mountains symbolizes governments, man. Mm. Okay, rulerships. So the most size said he will destroy in this mountain, which is America. Go ahead. He says, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. Uh -huh. And the veil that is spread. Ooh, oh yeah. And the veil that is spread over all nations. And the, and the veil that is spread over all nations. And what is that? All right, because these other nations are, are spiritually blind as well. They don't know who they are. They don't know who the damn devil is, right? So that's why we, we, that's why, that's why we read Jeremiah the first chapter. We're just not a prophet, a prophet to Israel. We're prophet to all nations, pursuant to Jeremiah uh, the first chapter, the fifth and sixth verse. We're wow. prophet to all nations, just not Israel, right? So we, so, so we tell them, what's going on we tell them the truth revelation the 12th chapter and the 20th chapter says that this devil go around deceive de deceiving on the nations right so that's when we come into play and we uncover all right or we take that that veil from all of their faces and make them realize what the truth is all right and make them start hating hate, hating him no nope. period God. And I, and I want to go ahead and add, add Psalms 37 to that, man. He says, he says, um, covering cast over all people, all right? Covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. I mean, the brother was talking about this earlier today on the phone, man. In Psalms 37. And, uh, where's it at? Yeah, in 35, he says, I have seen the wicked, all right? And, and man, we know through the spirit, whenever we see this phrase, the wicked, we know who this is, man. We know who this is talking about because Jacob has one, uh, he has one um, main foe, right? He has one arch nemesis. And that's Esau, from the very beginning, Jacob and Esau, this Bible has basically been about Jacob and Esau. So when you see the wicked, you should already know that this is talking about Esau. He says, I have seen the wicked in great power. Yeah, because Esau has great power right now. And spreading himself like a green bay tree, 
All right. If you look at a Green Bay tree, <clears throat> it's, it's a big tree and it has a lot of branches. It casts a lot of shade. Right. And so and he's comparing the wicked, the people that's in, in power, the, the wicked nation. They spread themselves like a Green Bay tree. And this is how uh, these other nations that have they have that veil of covering over them as well, because the tree provides shade, which is in this in essence, darkness. Right. And this is why um, America or any place where, where Esau is dwelling at or um, he's the chief at is known as the land of darkness. It's Job 10 and 22. He says, yep. a land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order. This, yeah, <laughs> this place has no order, man. Why? Because it is not operated by, um, by the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Anything outside of that is out of order, right? He says, and where the light is as darkness. Yeah, because everything that Esau does try to pose as light, right? Oh, how about we all just come together and just be one big happy family? Hey, man, according to God's law, that's darkness. God likes separateness, man, right? That's darkness. And this is why this place is called Babylon, man, right? And, um, yeah, that, yeah, bro, hey, that, I'm going to try to, I ain't going to try to make this long and drawn out, but it's just so many precepts, man. It's 2 Peter 2, 2 Peter 1, and I'm going to start at verse, uh, Yeah, I'm gonna start at verse uh I'm gonna start at verse 19. He says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed. So you do well if you take heed to these prophecies, right? As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. So when we understand the words of these prophecies, man, we get to have light in this land of darkness. We get to have light in, in, in Babylon, in Egypt, in spiritual Egypt, in spiritual Sodom. He says, as light unto a, uh, as, un, as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star arises in your hearts. And who's that day star? None other than Yahweh Shah. Numbers 24 and, and uh, 17. Talk about how uh, the star of, um, not star, uh, no, Revelation. I'm thinking of Revelation 22. And also, uh, yeah, and also Numbers 24. And, and what was that in Proverbs? Proverbs uh, 4 and 18. Because, yeah, this, this word is light, man. These prophecies is light. It says, but the path of the just is as a shining light, right, that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So these prophecies, they continue to, they continue to shine more and more until the day of Yahweh shine, until the day that he comes back and redeem his elect, man. All right. So we'll go ahead and go back to uh, take this alone. And uh, yeah, you started verse four. I... Oh no! no oh we... wait, verse three. Yeah, yeah. We we have the uh um um un, uh cover more. Yeah, it says um the son of um the son of perdition. All right. right? Says, yeah, and the son of perdition. What does that word perdition go into? Right. Well, I got a few um precepts. Ah. It says destroying utter destruction of vessels. Uh-huh. It says of vessels. Right. So Esau, he is that son of perdition, as scriptures have said. Why? Because he destroys things utterly. Look at the right. rainforest. Right? Look at look at uh <laughs> Look at uh, damn! Look at the land, bro. Everything, the air. He puts chemtrails in the air. He puts down fluoride in your water, right? To destroy, uh, uh, destroy you as well. He destroy man. Perfect example, right? What happened um a few years ago in the Gulf? That that great big oil spill, utter destruction, man. Killed all of the, the Amazon. Amazon last year. You see, and and when it talks about vessels, yeah. He destroys the vessels as well because um, the Most High God's men, right? We're known as vessels too, All right? Acts 9 and 15 says that Paul was a chosen vessel. So this man Esau, yeah, the son of perdition, the son of destruction, he has destroyed many vessels, many chosen vessels of the Most High. And he's going to continue to do so, especially 
coming soon in Jacob's trouble. All right, he's really because he has that gift. That's a part of his gift, right? In Genesis, uh, what was that? Um, Genesis twenty-seven and forty. He says, "And by that sword thou shalt live." All right? What does a, a sword do? It destroys, man. So this is his blessing. This was his blessing to destroy, because he has he has a he has a point and he has a reason to uh, to be in existence and to be in power right now, just to be to destroy. He he works off the left hand side of the most high, man. Right. This yeah. is six and eight, and I. Hey, hey, hey bro, hold, hold that real fast. Get Psalm seventeen and thirteen. Come, come. Psalm seventeen. Oh yeah. Yeah, bro, because you just uh, you just said that. Huh. It's Psalm 17 and 13. He says, Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, whew, which is thy sword. That which is thy sword. And you know that the that Esau is that sword, man. Mm. Okay. Esau is the instrument, because all the all, all sword is not talking about a little sword. A sword is just an instrument used to destroy, man. All right, and Esau, man, the most high uses God to literally destroy everyone. Hmm. Who I mean, like what nation didn't get raped? Look, Esau, Esau uh uh pillaged his own people. Ah. But yeah, ah. go back to that and revelation. To prove, and to further prove that this sword comes from Yahweh by Shem Let me get this Ezekiel 30 and 25. He says, because whenever a kingdom is established, boom, there goes that sword. Now that sword is in the hand of that ruling empire, right? Because the sword is going to be in Israel's hand pretty soon, right? This is Ezekiel 30 and 25. He says, but I will strengthen the hand. I mean, it's a lot. The arms of the king of Babylon and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down. And check this out. And they shall know that I am Yahweh when I shall put my sword <laughs> into the hand of the king of Babylon. And he shall stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. Yeah, so right now, basically, the Most High God put his sword in Esau's hand just so he can, so Esau can do what he does best, hunt. And he's hunting men right now. He's really about to start hunting Jacob, man. This is why we need deliverance so bad. So, yeah, I just want to pull that, showing that, uh, the most this is the most high God sword in Esau's hand, man. He gave him power, and Revelation 6 and 8 goes to uh, substantiate that. He says, And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed him, and power was given. Check this out, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. So when you have a sword, you have power, you have a weapon of destruction. This is perdition. This is all going back into how he is a son of perdition. He says to kill with the sword and with hunger and with debt. See, because also it's showing you that the sword, the uh, uh, that's not it's not only limited to um, to to a damn carnal weapon. It also extends out into uh, how you have power over resources. However, you can destroy something or someone. That's a that's a weapon which would be categorized as a sword. So yes, yeah, so he has the, the power to kill you with his armory, with his with his guns, right? With his literal sword, with grenades or drones or, or missiles. He says, and with hunger, right? Pretty soon these stores are about to be ransacked and they're about to be empty, right? He says, and with death and with the beast of the earth. And with the beast of the earth, right? Because he even uses... You go back into, uh, you know what I'm saying, during, um, during the Hellenization period and and, uh, and and what was that, before the Renaissance, when they was like literally sicking lions and, and all these other beasts upon on men to kill them? You know? Hell, Daniel and the lions then. Yeah, they used beasts of the earth, man, to kill you. It's all a part of, of, of Esau being that sword, being that son of perdition. Let's see. Uh, yeah, um, I have a few precepts. Uh, yeah, yeah. You want me to get them? 
Yeah, get Rev, Rev eleven and verse um eighteen. Eighteen. I read them. Okay, cut. Okay. Revelation eleven and eighteen says, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Furthering proven that uh um, um that Esau is the son of destruction, right? Because what does he do? Like the brother said earlier, he destroys the earth. And let's just prove. Uh, you know who, who is this man destroying the earth? Get Jeremiah fifty-one and verse twenty-five. Uh, just about to tell you. It's Jeremiah. Jeremiah fifty. Jeremiah fifty. Um, Jeremiah forty-nine, fifty, and verse fifty-one. It all says it all. It all says the same thing, man. It all says the same exact thing, right? So it says, "Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain." Right? Which, like I said earlier, mountain symbolizes governments, right? So Esau is a destroying mountain. Just goes around and just destroy every single thing, man. From 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 food to the atmosphere to everything. Right. If, if if the Mosai allowed him to go to Mars, or or if there's planners or not, that guy would destroy uh, them too. Right. Said the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. You see, it says right there that he destroys all the earth. Why you think, bro? Matter of fact, go into the word for destroy. Uh, it says, Shakaf, Shakaf, to ruin. This guy literally ruined the earth, man. To to corrupt, bro. This guy ruined the planet Earth. Damn, that's crazy. How do you, bro? Look at the water, man. Water brown as ever. Water water shouldn't be brown. Why and why is it brown? Cause he put a facade out that oh, if you eat shrimp and crab and lobster, you get money. So now everybody's running to eat damn shrimp and crab when they really are supposed to be cleaning the waters, man. They're bottom feeders. They're supposed to be purifying the water. But this guy is ruining things, man. He He's ruining the air that we're breathing in. He's ruining the foods, man. Why do you think everybody's so damn fat? Everybody's tired. Everybody's bugged out. Are they damn minds? Because everything is ruined, right? The, hey, man, the roles of men and women is ruined. What no. they teach you what a man is, what they teach you what a man is is a lie. What they teach you what a woman is is a lie, man. Esau ruined it. Esau ruins the earth. Destroy. So go back. Hey, he said yeah, destroyer. <laughs> destroy mountain. He's bro, this guy's a destroyer. It's so go back so we can uh, all right. Yeah, finish it off. It says. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee. Now, when the Lord says he's going to stretch, stretch his hand upon thee, it's not talking about a damn handshake, man. Yeah, yeah. Right? Dapping you up, talking about judging you. God. Right? And roll thee down from the rocks mm. and will make thee a burn mat mountain. Yeah, because when you're because when you're on, on the high of the hill, that means that you're heavily exalted. So the most I say, he's just going to roll you down, burn your ass, man. Why? Or how? By these, by these thermal nuclear missiles. God. He says he's gonna roll you down from where from the rocks, all right? And that's and that's how you know that this time about Esau, Obadiah one and three, the pride of thy heart has deceived thee, thou that dwells in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, who saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? All right, exactly. Who shall exactly who shall bring you into into a low into a lower state, which the Most High he's about to bring to a lower state. Matter of fact, get Job. Um, uh, Joe, I believe 40, 40 and 12. It's Joe 40 and 12. God, it says, Look on, I actually, I actually, start up one. All right, it's Joe 40 and 11. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold, everyone that is proud and abase him. Yeah, yeah, everyone that is proud to base him. Which, what does the word abase mean to make low? Mm -hmm. uh, Okan, Okan, if, if, if you if you want to go ahead and get it. Okay, God. Base. Chappelle says. Chappelle. Chappelle. Uh, to bring low, humiliate. 
Mosai say he's about to humiliate your ass. Mm. Everybody, hey, hey, showed you, it shows you, it's it tell it shows you that in Isaiah 14, everybody should look upon thee and say, Is this is the man who, who made who, who made the earth to tremble? Who who did who did weaken nations? How is it that he's become like one of us? That's what hey man, that's why Isaiah, Isaiah the 14 chapter says. So huh. people's going to be humiliating this guy, man. <laughs> Damn. Hey, check this out. It says to make low and to sit down. And what is oh, Isaiah 47? Isaiah 47. He says, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. He says, sit on right. the ground. And this is a sign right. of humiliation. When you sit in the dust, bro, Right, he says there is person no punch you. Hey, 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 listen, when a person punch you and you fall to the ground, what would that mean? <laughs> everybody, everybody start laughing at you. Ah, ah, he dropped you. Oh. Uh, he says, There is no throne. There is no throne because these people they're used to having a throne, they're used to having uh, a, a, a seat to sit in, a seat of uh legislation, a seat of power. To sit in, but there is going to be no more throne for the daughter of Babylon. Then, right? Further proven to you, and this is going into Esau that Babylon is 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 America. He says, "O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt be no more called tender and delicate, tender and delicate." Because right now, yeah, America. Well, not anymore, but there's a point where they used to be tender and delicate. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a point where they used to be tender and delicate, man. He says, uh, I'm going to skip down a verse. Uh, nah, I'm going to go straight to verse two. He says, take the millstones and grind mill, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the, the thigh, pass over the river. It wasn't mean to uncover the thy thigh, meaning uncover your secret parts. Going back in Jeremiah 49 and 10, now he talks about he's going to expose Esau. Because verse three says, "Thy nakedness shall be uncovered." Right? If you if you lift, let me yeah, let me yeah, yeah, let me get that real quick. Nahum three, I think it was three and five. Nakawam. <laughs> ah, yeah, this is Nahum three and five. He says, "Behold, I am against thee, saith Yahweh of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face." What does that mean? He's going to discover that. Basically, he's going to make your, your like, if you see a, a female on a windy day, you know what I'm saying? Her skirt fly up above her face. That's exactly what the Most High doing is to, to Esau's kingdom. He's discovering his secret parts. Damn, you see, ah, oh, damn, that nigga ain't got no damn pants on. He ain't got no britches on. Everybody gets to see your shame, man. And that's right. what he's doing to his kingdom. He's humiliating them in the sight of all these other people. This is why the uh, this is why these other nations are going to turn against uh, 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 against America. Cause they're gonna see their feel I'm like damn man this whole time you know what i'm saying we've been drinking your damn wine of fornication and you ain't shit you know right which right which this is going back to ancient is talking this is going back to ancient assyria which lets you know that america is assyria babylon egypt sodom and gomorrah all these ancient um empires amalgamated into one man that's why this is the most wickedest kingdom man uh, it says and i will shoot the nations thy nakedness yeah so not only are you going to get to see your nakedness but everybody's going to see it because this is how yeah. you get humiliated right because because yeah, if you was by yourself you know what i'm saying if, if a female was about herself you know what i'm saying nobody saw her skirt you know lift up in the wind in the walmart parking lot you know what i'm saying it was not going to Bring her much shame, but if if everybody saw it, she's that woman's gonna be humiliated, especially if she's ugly and out of shape, man. And he's also an ugly, vile creature, man. He says, "And the kingdom's thy shame." All right? You uh, you had some else on? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We didn't get uh, verse twelve. Yeah, verse twelve. He says, sure. "You want me to read it? You gonna read?" It. I got it. It says, "Look on everyone that is proud, and bring him low." And tread down the wicked in their place, see, and bring him low. See, this is all about the basement of, of the wicked, man. All right, the wicked is going to be tread down their place. And when you tread on something, hey, treading on something is not is not a good feeling, it's not a good thing. Hmm. All right, Esau is going to be beat 
and be into powder powders and he's really going to be in a low state in our kingdom wow. that's when he's going to be in a lowest stem talking about man man listen man <laughs> we we're going to see esau we're going to see cain in, in in his in his original form mm. the man the man cain i can't wait i can't wait to see the man cain wow. when you how was on, on your Howard Shaw's plan, uh, plantation, man. Uh, like, we're, like we're actually going to see, we're actually going to see this guy. We're going to see this guy, Kane. Like, we're literally going to see him. Damn. Like the man that killed Abel. We're mm -hmm. going to see him. We're going to see the man that seeked to kill our father, Yaiqua. We're actually going to see him in, in in his pure form, like him. How we look, whether 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 it's Evelyn Rothschild, whoever he is, he he's one of them devils. We're gonna see him, hmm. and we're gonna look upon him, and we're gonna humiliate his ass, man. Hey, hey, bro, yeah, hey, man, we we got a lot of, hey, bro, it's a lot happening, bro. It's a lot happening. It is, it's almost too much, you know what I'm saying to to. It's hard to keep up, bro. You know, it's hard to keep up. And uh, oh yeah, dang, he says, and tread down the wicked in their place, hide them in the dust together. That's what he said in Isaiah forty-seven. Let them sit in the dust. All right. And this, and if you look at when he says tread down the wicked in their place, hey, this is going to show you how this. Well, this is when that part in the law in Deuteronomy thirty-three is going to be fulfilled. Let's do Roman 33 and 29. He said, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by Yahweh. All right, because we're going to be saved from this devil in that day. He said, The shield of thy help, and who is a sword, right, of thy excellency, right? He's going to be the sword of our excellency then. Now the, is the sword is going to be in the Israelites' hand, in the, in the, in the elect's hands. We get to execute vengeance and justice in the earth he says and thy enemy shall be found liars unto thee and thou shalt tread upon their high places just like job said we're going to trade on their high places man right exactly which which you know which you know that right there ain't dealing with america that's dealing with all the other places all, that Esau, uh, all the different places that esau is that because remember esau angels and angels the american edomite Right, you got Esau over there in Europe. Uh -huh. Okay, because a lot of them elites, a lot of them, a lot of them elites live in Europe. So we're going to uh, pursue to Psalms, the 149th chapter. Uh -huh. We're going to uh, we're going to go around right after America America's destroyed, and we're going to round round them round them elites up. All right, we're going to put the fetters of 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 iron and chains around about their neck and their and their ankles. We're going to put their ass into slavery. Uh, period. 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 Oh. All right, all of, all of that off of verse three. Yeah, <laughs> verse four. Hey man, hey, the Christian church don't do this, man. Right. So it says, "Who poseth and exalteth himself above uh, above all he that says, is called who, God." See, he says, "Who opposeth and exalt himself above that is uh that is called God." When you oppose something, let's look at that. You resist it to be set over against, opposite, to be adverse to, right? So Esau is opposite of the righteous ways of the Most High. That's why Psalms 50 and 16, he says, for thou hatest instruction, seeing that thou cast, let me let me get back to that, because there is something in that that I want to, uh, I was reading it, that stuck out. Yeah, he say, uh, seeing that thou hatest instruction and casting my words beside uh, behind thee, uh, that's all right, that's all right, yeah. So Esau opposed himself against the most high man. Everything that most right. high claimed evil, you know what I'm saying? He says it's good, everything that and God says is good, he says is evil, and then and then it also says, then it also says to set over against, and when you're and when you're set over something, you're you know, exalting yourself over that, 
or over that person, right? Because it says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. So any God that people profess to follow, Esau, Esau thinks he's above all of them, all yeah. gods, right? Yeah. Which, 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 um, which, um, we're gods. So Esau exalted exalted himself above us. It tells you, it tells you that, it tells you that in, um, tells you that in Obadiah, Obadiah, also it tells you that in Isaiah 14 about how he, you know, uh, uh, likes to exalt himself over the stars of the Mosai, which we're the stars of the wow. Mosai. Uh, yeah. You want to go ahead and read? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Daniel 11 and 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself. Now, who's this king right here? All right, this king is, is going into, into the Greek empire, man. Same line of people till today. They're still Edomites. Going to show you that this wicked, right? He hasn't he hasn't been exposed like he is being exposed today, right? Because this king, somewhere down the line, he's reincarnated today, man. Somewhere in, in the elites, man, right? He's still an Edomite, so he's be, they're being exposed today, right? Go ahead. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself. Above Same thing. Second Thessalonians said. It said this. Second Thessalonians two. And, uh, and four, he says, who opposes and exalts himself. So we're going into history, right? Exactly who this is talking about, what kingdom this is talking about. This is talking about the Greek empire, man, ruled by Edomites. So he's just talking about Edomites right here. Go ahead. Right, it says, and magnify himself above every god. Above so every god, like the brother was talking about. Whether that may be the Israelite men or, or any other religion. You know what I'm saying? That it has their God. Esau magnified himself above them. That's why you get down white Jesus, Caesar Boger, showing you, no, I am the God, man. This man, is me. man, you get white, you get white everything, white pharaohs, everything, man. <laughs> yeah. like white Esau, like, like Esau, like, like Esau do not care. He don't, he don't care who you are. He's going to destroy what you believe in and say, no, I'm God, which uh you said uh this um this king dealing with King and the King Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth, mm -hmm. which his name means God, God manifesting in the flesh. That's what that name That's, means. Yep, his name means God manifest. Hey, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it, bro. More more evidence in his trial, more evidence to accuse his man. So when judgment day comes, listen, the whole world is going to see that Yahweh by Hashem was shot judges rightly, man. <laughs> we can't make this up. The Most High has exposed his man to the T, bro. He's exposed his man. And this is why Jacob is really about to catch a lot of hell, right? Because Esau has been exposed by his brother, man. Go ahead, up. Right, it says, and shall prosper to the to the indignation be accomplished. Oh, where you at? that? Uh, right here, to the oh. um indignation. Oh, yeah, yeah, go back up to uh, magnify himself above every God. All right, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just reading from the top. Okay, it says, on. and the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God, mm -hmm. and shall speak marvelous shall things speak. again. He says, and shall speak, once again, how does Esau speak? Through his legislation, through his laws, what he perpetuates in his laws, right? He speaks and marvelous things. Seven. Wait, say, I, I said that, I said that goes into Daniel 7, when it talks about, um, uh, uh, he shall speak great words mm -hmm. against the Mosai. The uh small horn. I'm, I'm the little horn, which the little horn is America. How America speak blasphemous great things against the heavenly father. See that? Just just mm -hmm. just just going back to it to when you said these are the same, these are the same people with the same exact agenda, man. Mm -hmm. His his this guy agenda is never going to change. Let's just say, let's just say Esau got 
let's just say let's just say another uh brand of Edomites was gonna rule, they would have they would have the same agenda, yep. same thing. Yeah, yep. uh, it's in their spirit. And include as he seven says, what can who can make straight what God has made crooked? And the most high just made this man crooked. He made this man just to fulfill the left side of him, man, to fulfill that evil part. Yeah. It says, and shall speak marvelous things against the most high, talking about using his laws and legislations uh, against the God of gods and shall prosper. Check this out. So he's going to continue to reign. He's going to continue to prosper, right? Till, meaning until the indignation be accomplished. Going back into his allotted amount of time. Esau has a lot amount of time to do all these to do all these things. And he knows this. Revelation 12 and 12. It's Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil, Esau, is come down unto you having great wrath. Why? Because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Right. Short time. He has an allotted amount of time. All right. So he says, till the indignation be accomplished for that, it is determined shall be done. And we already got what that word determined mean earlier. It literally means uh, uh, an amount of time. Man. Amount of time. So going back to 2 Thessalonians 2. Uh, where was we at? Uh, Verse 4. Verse 4. All right. So uh, this is 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And we ain't going to the word for worship. We ain't going to the uh, the root word. It's actually feared, reverence. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, yep. See, to fear, be afraid, which a lot of our people or people in general, mankind in general, they're, hey, man, they're afraid. Right, they're afraid of the so-called white man, or, or back when he was really at his peak, right in his prime, man. Everybody feared this guy, man. Mm -hmm. Everybody did. Hey, that fear is really about to conjure back up, though. It's really about oh, to conjure yep. back up when he lays down that hammer, bro. During Jacob's trouble, bro. He, yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't the white man's on, about on to our, remind you. He's about to remind you what his blessing is. On our people. But who yeah. put that sword in his hand? The Most High. So this is literally the Most High doing this, man. So Esau, it is a good reason. Well, probably not now, but but then, of course, the elect men, the the chosen, the the one third and the one forty four, they're not going to be afraid of them, right? But the rest of, of Jacob, the sinners of Jacob, they're going to be afraid, and they have good reason to be afraid of them, man. Why? Because this, this is skillful. This is a skillful hunter, man. The Most High God gave him this. This is his gift. This is his blessing. That's why he's he's uh, he's feared. It says, and to honor religiously and to worship. Yeah, damn Caesar Bourgeois, man. Or whatever, or whatever religion it is, man. He's, he's, you, uh, iconoclasm, man. He's whitewashed everything. Uh, yeah, that was a good point. Yeah, it's fear. Uh, it's, uh, Second Thessalonians 2. So that he, oh, yeah, that is worship. Right. So it says, so that he, as God, Sitteth in the temple of God. Sitteth in the temple of God. And when that happened, damn, the damn Greeks, Antiochus, Epiphanes, you know what I'm saying? They they went into our temple, man. They sat in our temple and they took things yeah. out. And they're doing what now? Doing it now. Because you keep reading, it's just showing himself that he is God. You, you go on Google, just, I'm just typing God. And who's going to pop up? The so-called white man. Let me like, like, I don't know what now. Yeah. And that and that and that goes back to the time period of 1942, which 1942 is what the is, is dealing with the <laughs> look at that renaissance period. Wow. See, that's <laughs> how you see is fucking white people, bro. See, it's all that's all you see, look at that. right? Right, which uh 1492 is dealing with the is dealing with the renaissance period with which renaissance means what rebirth wow. the rebirth the rebirth of everything man the rebirth of the so-called so-called white man the rebirth of of his of his wickedness everything man 
Okay, Renaissance means rebirth. Wow. And what, and what happened during the Renaissance period? He he destroyed, he 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 uh, committed a crime called iconoclasm, which means destroying of icons or or destroying of images. Because what did he do? When the Jews were in Europe and in Russia and different places over there, he started enslaving us, right? Sending us to the islands and then started painting over the true images of the Israelites and the Mosai and Yahushai. Because if you type in Russian icons, you're going to see um, Israelites with afros, man, with with um with halos, with halos on their head, with dark skin. Now we can go. Now we can go up inside and go up, go up inside the Catholic Church. What do you see? You see white images. Those images were originally dark because we were the original Catholics going back to the Byzantine Empire. It tells you that in revelation the 20th chapter we talk about uh how, how how the great red dragon was going to be subdued for a thousand years and that thousand years period was when we were ruling the byzantine empire because we ruled the byzantine empire for roughly a little bit over a thousand years man and then esau came came up came up into power started you had this guy oliver oliver cromwell oliver cromwell came in and started putting uh, European Jakes, okay, because we're the because because we're the real Europeans. Mm -hmm. A lot of Jakes, a lot of Jakes that have Scottish last names, they been had them when they were over there in Europe. Irish and Scottish last names, right? He started slaving us, and then he start repainting the images to fit how he look. So now, uh, what verse um was that? Oh, uh, let's see, that was. Second Thessalonians 2, and yeah, right. four. Showing himself that he is God now. This guy, this guy's a demon. This guy's a liar, man. Man, if I get that, Job 13 and 4. Uh. This, guy's, this guy's a goddamn, yo, man. Yo, yo, we really want to, yo, man, we really want to slay this guy, man. <laughs> yeah. He says, yeah, Job 13 and 4. Yeah, yeah Job, Job 13 and 4. Yeah, he says, uh, but ye are forgers of lies. Forgers of lies, man. This guy's a forger of lies. And what is what is the forge? Matter of fact, go, go into that word for forge. Remember how remember how when you was a little kid you used to forge your mom's uh name? Mm -hmm. To smear plaster over. Oh my goodness, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, bro. To plaster over. What does this guy plaster over? The saints. This man is a forger of lies. Because when you're plastering over something, what are you trying to do? We, we, you're trying to cover up something. Mm -hmm. You're lying. You're trying to cover up, you're trying to cover up your lie. Which goes back into the lesson. Your ass is getting exposed. You're being revealed. That man of sin. God, that's it, bro. You got it. This had to be brought up. Hey man, that was hey. hey man. This is this and this is the time and this is the season to be speaking. And when you speak, make sure that your, your speech is, is is seasoned with with salt, man. Going into these prophecies. Edifying. This should this should not just be just talking just about any and every old thing. No, this is a time of prophecy right now. And this is why we're going into this right here. Because it's important to know who this damn devil is. Because you got a lot of people who still don't know who he is, man. Right? But he's got to be made known. All right? 2 Thessalonians 2. And I'll read because I'm going to go real quick through this. He says, 2 Thessalonians 2, I'm going to skip down to verse 7. He says, for the mystery of iniquity. And this is why it's called mystery Babylon as well. Same people, man. Mystery of iniquity doth already work only he now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way once again the most high god is just letting him do what he do until he be taken out the way and then shall that wicked uh-huh shall that wicked see how it's capitalized of course we didn't have you know um characters like that <laughs> you know uh in our language in the hebrew or even in the greek 
But it says, then shall that wicked, but he's letting you know that it's talking about a particular people group, right? Be revealed. And once again, going to that word revealed means what? To uncover, lay open, like the brother uh, just pulled. It means uh, he plastered over his lies, but now he is being made known. It says to make known, make manifest, disclose what was before unknown. Yeah, because at first we didn't know who we was. Right. And that was going into the first part of this, of what Paul was talking about. There was a great falling. It had to be a great falling away first. Right. So once we came into our nationality and our identity, boom, then you know who this damn devil is. Right. Anybody who scrolls up and down YouTube, you know what I'm saying? They see the so-called Hebrew Israel, black Hebrew Israelites or whatever. They look at some videos. What do they, what's a common thing that's always talked about? Who we are and who the enemy is. Why? Because this is something that has to happen. Right. And this is something that is happening, man, on a major scale right now. This is how you know that we are at the precipice of the end, man. If you can't see that we're not at the end, bro, you, hey, he just simply close your, close your eyes. So, oh, same chapter right here. Same chapter. Second, Thess <laughs> Second Thessalonians 2 and 11. Uh, he says, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So you're still believing that you're a Hamite. You're still believing that he's a uh, uh, he's Japheth, right? That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So the Most High gave you this uh, strong delusion just so you could be damned because you had no pleasure in, in the truth, man. All right. And let me go back uh, just a few verses up. He says, and then that shall that wicked be revealed. So Esau's going to be uncovered whom the Lord Check this out. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit, with the spirit of his mouth. How is he doing that? By the mouth of his prophets, right? Hewing Esau down by the mouth of his prophets. He's, we're consuming Esau by the spirit of, 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 the, of the most high God's mouth, right? And shall destroy. So not only is he going to be confounded by the mouth of the prophets, but he's also going to be destroyed with the brightness of his coming. And what's the brightness of his coming? The missiles, man. The missiles are very bright. <laughs> yeah so that's basically all i had unless you got something out no uh, so yeah man oh uh, yeah so so my people that's watching this you know what i'm saying hey take heed you know what i'm saying take heed to this lesson and more importantly just go to your bible man look at who this who your enemy is all right because it's important He's going to be made known regardless, but it's better for you to know who he is right now so you can better prepare yourself. Understand that this is, this is that hammer of the whole earth, like, uh, like uh, Jeremiah 15, 23 said. The hammer of the whole earth is about to be cut asunder. He's about to be plundered. But right now, the hammer, hey, Esau has not, that hammer has not come down as earth yet, man. But it's about to pretty soon, right? FEMA camps, we're about to start getting rounded up in FEMA camps. You know, people just getting slaughtered out here in the streets, you know, like we're literally here, bro. We're literally at the end, you know, so it's important for you to see that, man, and to know who is doing it. Esau, but ultimately the Most High, because the Most High put his sword in Esau's hand. All right. So if you got some mad up. Nah, bro. All right, all right. Yeah, so with that, until next time, I want to say shallow one. Shallow one.